Thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, a, a couple of quick points. I heard it said here that there are many options currently for repair. Um, when I had a fan break in my Xbox. The moment I saw the look on his face when he mentioned the broken fan in his Xbox, I knew it was going to be good, and he did not disappoint. I only had one option. I had to send it back to Microsoft. I had to wait several weeks. It was expensive. And then I got back a unit which was probably not the same unit I sent in, uh, obviously they, they wipe all the data, uh, and, and say that you won't have any problem restoring all your accounts. And, you know, maybe, maybe it's actually harder than that. Um, my point here is that this is about competition. There's no competition. If there's competition, then people would have to try to get that console repaired more quickly. Uh, they'd have to get it back to me in a way that I wanted as a consumer. Um, so, so I just, I wanted to kind of probe into that. I, I recognize the, the need for protecting digital copyright, uh, and I, I think that's absolutely legitimate. Mm -hmm. But, but a broken fan is not part of that. Um, when a pad on my Xbox controller gets worn because it's old, um, I don't see a copyright problem with taking the thing apart and putting in a new pad. Um, why do I have to get a super special screwdriver uh, in order to do that? Um, so, I, I mean, that, I think that's really the focus here. It's not about being able to get into every little electronic component in this thing. It's about being able to fix a USB port or a worn piece of rubber. Um, so could you, could you talk about that? Briefly, please. Senator, um, we recognize that this is an issue that many members of this body are concerned about. And we do look forward to having more robust conversations about this. Uh, simply passing this legislation we think is uh, ill-considered. We would like to have more robust conversations. I believe that we get to have that opportunity uh, as with some of the conversations that a number of us have had uh, earlier this week. So you get to speak to them behind closed doors and we don't. Interesting. Thanks for letting me know. And your comments will be uh, taken into serious consideration as we go on with that. But at this point, this is not something that we think that uh, the, this committee nor the legislature should move. This is what Erica likes to call dancing around the flowers, because what he did there is he spent about a minute talking. But if I listen to that again, I, I don't hear an answer to Senator Derrick's question. And one of the things I genuinely appreciate about that senator, regardless of his political views or your political views or how the views of that senator may be different from my viewers, is this is a hearing on right to repair. He's listening to the arguments proposed by the pro-repair people. He's listening to the arguments about the from the people against the bill. And he's throwing straight down the center hardball questions at that lobbyist. He's not throwing those really softball questions that you saw in Nebraska and Boston. He's talking from personal experience and saying, why are things like this? Why should they be like this? And he wants a straight answer. And the only answer that this gentleman could give him was a bunch of being startled and also saying, oh yeah, well, you know, this is, I'd like to have more conversations. We've talked about this in the past when it's not a hearing. It sounds to me like they really want to cement the death of this bill behind closed doors, outside of the scrutiny of the public, because he doesn't want his lack of answers or his bad answers being aired in public where people can hear them. And the lack of answers that he had to these general questions or experiences really speaks to me to how unprepared these lobbyists are for actual opposition. It seems like they're really used to these really softball questions that are not really designed in any way, shape, or form to really dig into the issue. And when they are faced with even one hardball question, they crumble. And that's something that's interesting. It really does showcase if you are used to having to answer hardball questions on a regular basis for years, as many any of the pro repair people are, we're prepared for it. We're on point for any of the questions that we get. But you ask them a question that's even slightly probing what it is they're advocating for, and they just kind of fall apart.